Got it. Okay, prepare your life. So let me get this going here. Okay, three, two, one. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you that you are a God of covenant. And we would ask that we would be obedient to our part of the covenant. Transform us by your mercy, power, and grace, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you power and grace, and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. So uh, we had a little technical difficulty getting sound out last week. Let me know if we're okay here today. We're in Joshua. We're in Judges chapter two, and uh, and the story of Judges is repeatedly that they kept the covenant and then they didn't, and then they kept the covenant and they didn't. Over hundreds of years, um, we think about these books as being um, one day after another, and that's not necessarily true in Judges. It's one era. It's one judge after another. Uh, so we'll we'll see how that works. Yeah, if there's a book that defines the dark side of <laughs> Israel, this is it. Yep. Um, as much as any, uh, you take things out of context here so easily and paint a picture of um, barbarism that uh, rebels anything you see today and lay it at Israel's feet. But um, if you're doing that, uh, you don't have the broad context which is necessary for properly understanding what's going on here but it's definitely a story of israel spiraling down over several centuries morally speaking um theologically speaking uh, yes. uh, reflecting on their relationship with the lord it just goes from bad to worse yes. over time starts out fair fairly well with the first set of judges um, but if we take them in tiers, there are 13 judges that are focused on here. That's not the total sum of all the judges or all the stories, because this is taking place over a period of at least 350 years or so, uh, before we get to their first king, which is King Saul, uh, which uh, ends this period. You can kind of look at this as Israel's uh, primal, uh, it's sort of like a tribal period um where we have what essentially what you'd call warlords dominating uh groups of families and um operating under their own uh under their own jurisdiction so to speak yep. the book ends with the theme of the people uh the chapter i should say ends with the theme uh the people did what they thought was right in their own eyes That's right. there was no there was no uh, sense of uh, absolute authority of the Lord whatsoever. It was all moral relativism gone, gone wild, <laughs> gone crazy here. So, there you go. Um, anyway, uh, interesting story. Not the kind of book you want to open if you're down in the dark. <laughs> That's right. Uh, if you're looking for uh, a little uh, uh, spiritual edification, um, you could do better just about everywhere else. <laughs> Uh, nonetheless, it's great to reflect on uh, how things can go from bad to, bad to worse, having started well and with a proper covenant and so forth, as we will see here. Um, doesn't take long um, stepping aside to uh, corrupt the whole pattern. So we're picking up here Judges chapter 2, New Living Translation, and beginning with verse 1. Uh, the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochim and said to the Israelites, I brought you out of the land into this land that I swore to give to your ancestors. Okay. First part of the covenant. God swore to give land to your ancestors. And he's talking about uh, the original family, uh, the families of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, uh, and Joseph. Uh, and uh, when Joseph passed, uh, the Lord raised up Moses as a leader for the people. So, um, and I, I said, uh, this is the Lord speaking. I said, I would never break my covenant with you. So that's the Lord's part. Verse two, for your part, 
you were not to make any covenants with the people living in this land that I'm in the process of giving you. Instead, you were to destroy their altars. Amen. But you disobeyed my command. Why did Why you, did you, you do, do this? this? <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, let's talk about covenants. We, th we have a misunderstanding of covenants today. Mm -hmm. We think, okay, if I buy you a car for a hundred bucks, okay, shake hands, hundred bucks, car, that's a covenant. No. In those days, a great king would come in to an area with his 20,000 troops and say to you with your 10,000, either submit to us or die. And you say, okay, we'll do whatever you want. And that's that's the kind of covenant that God makes because he is all powerful and he keeps his rules. He always keeps his promises, but covenant promises that, that mankind doesn't keep has voids the contract or at least voids the uh, today part of the contract. In the long term, God always keeps his covenants, but mankind often strays from doing the thing that God had happened to do. Mm -hmm. So. God's command is, okay, I'll take care of you, I'll lead you, I'll guide you, wipe out your enemies, even down to their altars, and bring it just down to dust, and then they won't be a cancer to you, they won't be a, a connection to you, and well, I will take care of you. And instead, and don't covenant with these people, okay, well, we don't really need God on this because we can have the Philistines help us out or whatever. That's abhorrent to God Almighty because he set up a covenant that was between God and the leaders and the people of Israel. Right. So why did you do this? Verse 3. So now I declare that I will no longer drive out the people living in your land. There will be thorns in your sides and their gods will be a constant temptation to you. This is key. That uh, essentially... Uh, uh, Two major, well, many major uh, facets here, but uh, the whole idea of, uh, for instance, uh, many of these people collectively called the Canaanite people, the people, yes. the natural people living in the land, uh, which include the Jews. They, they're considered Canaanite as well, especially at this time. And uh, uh, the deal was that uh, they they were primarily Baal worshippers. B A A L Baal worshippers, who was a god of uh, storms and also fertility, and the fertility part was the temptation part because uh, they uh, uh, believed in um, using um, prostitutes really as part of their worship service to practice fertility. And thereby, uh, that was their means of calling on Baal uh, for their, uh, not just their uh, personal fertility and uh, having children, but for having their crops grow and their uh, agriculture flourish and so forth. And, and, the, and I'm sorry. So, yeah. And the gods of Canaan demanded baby worship, baby sacrifice. Baby sacrifice. So, no. so it's abhorrent to God. That there's baby sacrifice, mm. and that takes us into yeah, 2023 today, where it's convenient to you know sacrificing babies. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I don't know. I think the number is 50 million babies we've sacrificed since uh, since Roe went into more than that now. At least more than that. Ten and the, uh, as a cancer survivor and as a cancer sufferer, some of those 50 million would have found the cure for cancer. I'm sure of it. They would have found. Just because people have a whatever background does not mean that they can't have brilliance in their life and make a difference. And so, sure. you know, the, the the suffering, the suffering of following false gods reverberates through society. Hmm. Yeah. So that's that's the issue that um, the Lord had. A, you know, you say this is a bloodthirsty God. He wanted to kill all of Jew, the Jews' neighbors. Uh, that's not the proper context. Proper context: these people were virulently off track in their in their uh, what they called a righteous life, killing yeah. their children. How could that? You know, it, it, 
these are uh, this is this is just way beyond uh, in uh, the uh, negative direction uh, what the God of Israel would have. So how do you put an end to it? Yeah. You put an end to it. That's what he, that's the plan here. The, the Lord would have that happen. But the Israelites, as they did vanquish these people, did not follow through the command to get rid of them, to right. get them out of the land. Uh, so that the pract these practices, these abhorrent practices, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, that's right. um, would stop and that they would not be um, drawn into them. That's right. Uh, that, but that, uh, but they didn't do that. So uh, instead, they blended with them and they became corrupted by them. So much so that you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell the godly from the ungodly. Right. Oh, Yeah. That's because there weren't any godly people. Left. Well, there were some godly people, <laughs> but um, I mean, it, it's it's similar to the churches today. How do you tell, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm, mm. I'm living with this person and I'm, um, you know, I'm doing all of these kind of evil things, but I'm a Christian. And so you think, okay, well, you've got the right name, just the wrong life. Yeah. And that's what's happened here. They got the right name. So sure. if they were living wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a, a big difference in the covenants, too. And we could talk about the uh, activity of the Holy Spirit being in people today versus upon them at most. Um, the uh, I have to consider consider that as well. Um, Good morning, Sheila. I'm glad you can hear us. Hi. Uh, so, God's will be a constant temptation to you. Yeah, see, it's that constant temptation the Lord was trying to spare them of. Yes. Uh, because it's a powerful, powerful uh, temptation. That's right. Bad company corrupts good morals. However, the, the scripture is still is true. Yep. So verse 4. Uh, we're in Judges 2, verse 4, and we're using the NLT. Uh, when the angel of the Lord finished speaking to all the Israelites, the people wept loudly. So they called the place. So in other words, they were touched by this 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 um, uh, condom, uh, uh, judgment yeah. that the Lord made of them did bring them to tears. Yes. Okay. Which so is a good start. By it's, yes, it's that shows that he's still alive and well with, within right. them, <laughs> and they are still responsive to him. Very important. So they called the place Bokim, which means weeping, and they offered sacrifices. Sacrifices that are uh, acceptable to the Lord there. That's right. So every time they went by this city called Bochum, they would think, oh, this is the place we wept before. Remember that? Already. Yep. Remember back to that. Yep. So the death of Joshua. Uh, verse 6. After Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. So the land was divided up per tribe. Uh, and we had to wrap it up yesterday. And we didn't want to do any of that again today? Or no? I'm sure. I'm not sure what we have left. I think somebody's been in here. We're reworked our stuff. Well, here we go. It. This is it. Okay. So every tribe. Now, just to give you a sense of this, uh, this is like twice the size of New Jersey um, in, in, in America. Uh, the actual Jewish uh, uh, land today is the size of New Jersey, so maybe it's three times the size. But they didn't conquer it all. They didn't get it all. Not even like they were promised it because they got caught up serving false gods and and uh, making making covenants to false gods and to their people. But this is what they were. This is what they were uh, promised to do, and this is what would have been theirs if if they had been obedient. And then we get to David's time, and we see that he conquered this and more but um so yeah that's what that's what we're looking at and uh go ahead right yeah this is um uh, this would be um lebanon today and you can see the word damascus there syria is over here this is the golan heights uh that border is still pretty much in place today um you can see right here the uh, the um, Jordan River system, which is like uh, follows the Continental Divide right through here. This is the eastern border of Israel today. Yeah. What God promised them, and this is not to scale, 
uh, is all the way over to the Euphrates River, which really, if this were drawn to scale, would be over here somewhere. Um, and comes down, but doesn't quite show us uh, the, uh, just about touches uh, Egypt down here yeah. in the uh, south uh, west. Um, but they actually be a little bit uh, further south than this. Uh, so, but you see the, the names of the tribes here, Judah, Reuben, Gad, Ephraim, Dan, Dan's in two places, uh, Manasseh, Zebulun, and so forth. The, the point we're trying to illustrate here is uh, the, the land had been dry, uh, uh, had been uh, drawn up, divided according to the 12 tribes. There you go. And here we go again. Um, Serve the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and leaders who outlived him. Okay, Israelites. Uh, serve the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Now he's, this is reflecting all the way back to the uh, the Exodus and the crossing of the, of the Red Sea and so forth. Amen. Major, major miracle. Obviously one that, that endures to this day with major celebration. That's right. Verse 8, Joshua, son of Nun, my understanding is it's pronounced Nun, not none, not known, but Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had been allocated at Timnath Sirah, we went over this yesterday or the day before, in the country of Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Okay, so the point is Joshua Last of the uh, godly leaders, shall we say, if we want to categorize them? Yes. Uh, well, no, but he's uh, he, uh, consistently godly because we see yeah. we see godly leadership in judges occasionally, yeah. and then we see miserable leadership also. Yeah, okay. it seems that when God appoints a new judge or brings another judge forth, things uh, tend to straighten up for a while, but then over time, uh -huh. it's the erosion of that initial righteousness that uh, is um, is really what the book is about, or at least these, these chapters here. Uh, verse 10. Uh, after that generation, this is Joshua's generation, Dad, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. This is one generation later, and all of that knowledge that uh, Joshua uh, brought forth from the red, uh, the uh, Exodus period, and so forth, not acknowledged anymore. And we think about Joseph and his time. Joseph brought what 70, 72 people into Egypt, and uh, a, a few generations later, they forgot. You know who's who's this Joseph guy? And so, yeah. And what is so? And then eleven, they did evil. Verse eleven, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. Okay. That's the that's the turn in the wrong direction. By <laughs> twelve, yeah, it is a it, talent for understatement. Right <laughs> there we go. Uh, they abandoned they abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and they angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal. And the images of Astaroth. Astaroth was, I guess, Baal's sidekick. Um, this made the Lord burn with anger against Israel. So he handed them over to raiders who stole their possessions. Um, graphic uh, illustration of that later in the, in the chapter. He turned them over uh, to their enemies all around. And they were no longer able to resist them. Without the Lord in their presence, they did not have... Uh, enough going for them to resist their enemies. Verse 15, every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, against the Israelites, yes. causing them to be defeated, just as he had warned. And the people were in great distress. Okay, we'll pick it up tomorrow then. Okay. Um, Lord, we thank you that you are a God of covenant. And if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and repent, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. And we thank you that we can live in the covenant. But more importantly, we have a new covenant, one that, one that involves the blood of Christ and the sacrificial payment for our sin. We would ask, O oh Lord, that we would walk 
in new relationship with you that we'd be transformed by your power, mercy, and grace. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again for your word and your spirit and these perspectives from so long ago uh, that um, hold some very important lessons for us today that um, we may have a proper relationship, a right relationship, a godly relationship with you uh, that may not hold up, that may uh, indeed uh, become corrupted and very quickly if we're not mindful, if we're not uh, uh, proactive yes. in our maintenance of our relationship with you, yes. that we seek you and understand you first and trust in you uh, for um, the major decisions uh, that we are faced with. Yes. We thank you for your continued presence and your anointing that, um, that uh, you may help us uh, keep to the straight and narrow yes. and live lives that glorify you yes. in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Have a blessed day. Enjoy the Lord's day. Yep. Amen. Thanks for joining us.